please welcome Labour MP Clive Lewis. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I can't actually see anyone, so that's great. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. I have to keep convincing myself that I'm not here to do stand-up. Uh, listening to these guys, they're brilliant. Um, I've just come from the House of Commons today where the Tories are putting through the second reading of the Investigatory Powers Bill. They're trying to convince us that it isn't going to lead to a police state and they're not going to trample on our human rights. So I do sometimes wonder, you know, in terms of comedy, where I've come from. I actually think that's actually the comedy today, if we're quite honest. Uh, look, I was asked up to come up here today to speak a little bit. First of all, to say thank you to all of you from Jeremy and the team for the support that you've shown for a new kind of politics and a new Labour Party and hopefully a new country at some point uh, in the near future. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to start as well about why I supported Jeremy Corbyn. We were a, a very small band of supporters around Jeremy and I remember we were sat in a room uh, and I, when I first got to Parliament um, I remember thinking that the left would be really organized. I know, you, 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 you might laugh. Um, and I, I genuinely have told this story a couple of times. I expected to kind of be taken into this kind of room in Parliament where there are going to be data banks of people on a computer and someone would just turn around and go, hey, welcome to the left, we're here. But basically it was Richard Bergen with a scrap of paper going around calling for more anti-austerity policies in the Labour Party. And that basically was the left in those first few ugly days after the general election. And what we saw was that our party was shifting to the right. Basically the analysis, the analysis was the Conservatives have just won on a right-wing agenda. We basically have to just tack off slightly to the left of them if we want to win the next election. And that filled many of us with utter dread and despair. And we caught a Jeremy and we said to him, you've got to stand. We know you can't win, Jeremy, but you've got to try and bring the debate over a little way this way. And he stood and he didn't just bring the debate over, he smashed the room. He smashed the campaign and I think he wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for you. But you know, there's a lot of hard work ahead because Jeremy isn't secure. I think we all know that there are people still in the Parliamentary Labour Party that will not rest until Jeremy Corbyn and what he's achieved so far is dead and buried. And there's a lot of hard work to do. But there are other reasons why um, I've supported Jeremy Corbyn. You know, one of the things about the, the last Labour government was whatever we say about it, whatever it got right, whatever it got wrong, I don't believe George Osborne and the Tories when they say Labour didn't fix the roof when the sun was shining. It did. You compare that last Labour government to where we are now. Sure start. The NHS, school buildings, classrooms, all the things that we did. The problem is, it wasn't the roof that was a problem. We didn't rebuild the foundations of our economy. And that was the problem. And by that now, we've now got a Chancellor with a leader, Jeremy Corbyn, Shadow Chancellor, sorry, with, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself there, with Jeremy Corbyn, who is rewriting and ripping up the rules of the last 35 years of Thatcherite Reagan economic policy. And I think tomorrow, in the budget, when, Jer when John stands up and Jeremy stands up, we're going to see a Labour Party that starts talking about good investment, investing in people, in jobs, in skills, in manufacturing, in actually having an economy that works for people, not the 1.5 million zero-hour contract jobs that this government has created since 2010, not the low-paid, insecure work where no one knows what's happening to them the week after next or even the next day. We want a different vision for a different type of economy. And that's not just happening in this country, it's happening across the world. We're fit Clinton is feeling the burn of Bernie Sanders. People there want real change. They're, set, they're fed up of triangulation. They're fed up of the third way. They want to see something different. And Jeremy Corbyn, Bernie Sanders, they represent that. So what I'm going to say to you now is this. If you really want to support Jeremy Corbyn, if you want to see a Labour government in 2020 where we have a new kind of politics, a radical vision for our economy and our society that is fairer, that tackles inequality, that looks to the future, that takes on the challenge that the existential threat that climate change represents, then we need to start working now. It's great that you're here tonight, but I want to see as many of you as possible in the coming weeks and months on the doorstep fighting for the best Labour victory that we can get in the local elections that are coming up. Because that 
more than anything, is going to ensure that Jeremy Corbyn survives the next weeks, months and years ahead and that we may well see Jeremy Corbyn for PM in 2020. Thank you very much. <laughs>